What's up guys, AD back with another Destiny Child video here on the channel and in today's video everyone we are going to be discussing units that I recommend you all to prepare for our upcoming Endless Duel and Guard event. So this will be arriving next week on the 29th of September but I wanted to discuss some of the units to prepare for this event as of course Hot Time will begin later today. So we'll be diving into the units that are banned for our upcoming End Guard event as well as discussing options that I did put together for you all to prepare for the next season but before we get started everyone make sure to leave a like on this video as well as be sure to subscribe to the channel and of course if you haven't yet done so already check out channel memberships down below if you're interested in further supporting the channel and a huge thank you to all of the members that have joined so far but with all of that being said let's get started with discussing the units that are banned for our upcoming endless duel end guard season 6 event now this will begin on september 29th 8 UTC and the battle period will end on October 6th for UTC. As for the battle rules here, we do have increased drive gauge charge amount by 30% and drive skill damage by 100%. As for the units that cannot join, we do have debuffer childs and the banned childs. So the debuffer category as a whole is banned for the event. And for the banned childs here, as you can see on screen, we have five star hard worker Neptune, the light type supporter, five star bespoke. Spoke Luffy, the fire type healer. 5-star Glorious Messier, the Water Type Healer, 5-star Naive Synrix, the Wood Healer, 5-star Perfect Mona, Wood Healer, and 5-star Mascot Clotho, the Dark Type Defender. So as you can see, they banned out a lot of the healer units here for our upcoming events, as well as a tank ban in Clotho, which is honestly pretty random as they did let all of the other defenders slide, but I guess they just wanted Clotho out of there due to the fortitude. But anyways, let's get started with the units that I do recommend you all prepare for for the upcoming event. Now we do have the defenders here on this team that I do recommend you all to prepare. Now I do expect this event to be very water heavy as of course we do have buffs coming to Paquette, the water type defender, as well as Ymir isn't banned. So I would expect the teams to be very water heavy. So you could expect this, but regardless, we do have other elements recommendations here as well. So let's get started with the first in Ymir. Of course, Ymir is a top tier priority for the endless duel event and of course endless duel in general he is a very strong staple water type defender for the pvp game mode now we do have taunt in his slide skill as well as reflect which is very strong we also do have grant invincible on his tap skill as well as the slide skill damage defense increase on his tap as well now his drive skill also does have reflect and of course the slide skill damage defense plus which will be very crucial for this upcoming end guard events as of course attack will be the primary damage dealers as debuffers are banned. Moving on, we do have the wood type defender in Raffles. Of course, Raffles is very amazing as on her slide skill, she actually does have immortality. So she does apply this to three wood type allies. So if you can manage to surround her with some wood units, definitely make sure to do so as we actually do have a new wood type healer arriving with this event as well in the five star Freya. So she will be very strong alongside a units like Raffles. So Raffles, will definitely be a top tier priority for the event she is amazing unignited so definitely make sure to use this unit if you do happen to have her next up everyone we do have the light type defender in sweeping boreas now boreas is of course a very strong in general as she does have immortality on her slide skill as well as petrifying touch so this will help during fever time as of course the drive skill damage is increased so you'll be taking a ton of damage from those drive skills and to counter the fever time in some sort of way, we do have Boreas here to provide extra protection. So definitely a very amazing option here in the light type defender. Make sure to use her if you do have this character. As I would say the top tier priorities for the tanks would be Ymir, Raffles, and Boreas. As well as the mention of Paquette, she will be very strong alongside water type allies. So if you are running a pretty heavy water type roster, definitely make sure to run Paquette as well as Ymir. And I would sprinkle in Raffles alongside Freya and consider Boreas as well if you don't happen to have Paquette raised. As for the honorable mentions, I would say we do have five star Maupin. Now, of course, the fire type roster won't be doing too well in this end guard event as we do have Luffy banned. Now, Luffy is a very crucial part of the fire type team. So I don't 
expect to see many maw pins, but if you do have her raised and want to use her for the event, definitely make sure to toss her in just to fill a slot. But I wouldn't expect her to do too well, as well as the four star defender here that many of you should have her ignited in Echo. So these are just units to fill the slots, but I would definitely prioritize the other tanks such as Ymir, Raffles, Boreas, and Paquette. Next up here, everyone, we do have the attackers I do recommend for this event. Now, of course, you can really use any attacker that you do have prepared, primarily the six hit sliders, as well as the attackers with focus in PvP, as well as magic damage, which is why we do have Artemis and Lassie here towards the front of the lineup. We also do have poison damage dealers such as Eve, as well as Tokika. And of course, a unit like Kefri could be pretty helpful, as I would think, because of her slide skill here. She does actually have a blind here, which decreases attack accuracy by 40.9%. Now, of course, this is at plus six stats and ignited, but she also does have skill gauge blast here for PvP. Now, of course, this is prioritized to the debuffer enemies, so I'm not sure how the second portion of her slide skill would work, but regardless, she is still a six hit slider if you do have her ignited, and the blind may come in handy against those attackers. So I would definitely prioritize attackers like Artemis and of course Lassie. We also do have the additional attackers here in Eve and Tokika for their added poison damage. So they'll be very amazing as of course they are water type units so they will work very well on that all water team if you do happen to aim for it. And Kefri here an honorable mention for this lineup here. Now we actually do have more attackers as of course we do have quite a few that are recommended for PvP. Now I do have Myra here in the second lineup to start she does have a ton of dot so she may come in handy but if you are facing up against many water type allies she probably won't do too well as well as cortis and bathory but cortis and bathory here is a six hit slider so you may want to use her anyway if you do have slots to fill now another amazing option would be dreamer saturn here as she does have tons of damage over time due to her curse damage so definitely make sure to use saturn and most importantly if you did manage to choose her from the lisa's extra lessons she'll be a great option option for the end guard events. Now we also do have here units like Gunslinger Hilder as well as Pepita, just more six hit sliders for the event and Pepita here will come in handy especially if you are running that's wood type of row with Raffles and Freya. So I would keep your eye on Pepita here as she will come in handy alongside Raffles and manage to deal tons of damage against those water type units. Next up here everyone we do have the supporters that I recommend you all to use for the upcoming events. So we do have have Anemone here as of course Anemone is very strong now due to her buffs she will be amazing in the end guard mode we do have her tap skill here which does heal as well as has nullified debuffs now of course this won't apply as we do have all debuffers banned but the heal here may come in clutch we also do have the slide skill here which is very strong which does apply gauge charge amounts plus to three allies as well as attack percentage plus for two turns and most importantly the invincible here which is very strong as like mentioned those attackers will be dealing a ton of damage during this event so you'll want to counter that as much as possible and most importantly she is a water type supporter so she will be working very well alongside your other water type units and moving on we do have five Five star water type Thispy. Now Thispy here will be very strong. Of course, she is a water type unit here. She also does have skill gauge plus on her slide skill. And of course, the immortality, which will be very amazing and definitely save you a ton in this game mode. We also do have here the skill gauge charge amounts on the tap skill. And most importantly, the leader skill here will be very strong as she does have skill gauge charge speed plus 15% for all allies as well as an additional 10% for water type allies. So this will be very highly prioritized and I would expect to see this leader skill a ton as of course, Natalus is banned alongside all the other debuffer childs. So you could expect this speed to be a high priority alongside her amazing teammates in Burning Passion Anemone here. We also do have Anemone's leader buff, which could be pretty great as well in the skill gauge charge amounts plus 20% for water type allies. So 
definitely make sure to consider these two leader skills here if you are running primarily water type units. Moving on, we do have the five star light type supporter, Wuldan. Now, I would definitely prioritize the upcoming light type supporter in Jakangabi over Wuldan, but let's say you don't happen to summon Jakangabi or you just want to skip her banner, then you can definitely use Wuldan here. She will be very helpful if you are running a decent amount of light type units. So, a light type row here would be pretty amazing, as of course, she does have here her slide skill, which does have skill gauge charge speed plus, as well as the skill cooldown minus for the three light type allies for two turns. Now, of course, this is after ignition. Now, she won't be nearly as strong as Jakangbi, but she still is an option for the light type row if you would like to run her. But definitely make sure to prioritize the upcoming supporter in Jakangbi. She will be very strong for the PvP game mode, and we'll be sure to discuss her in a separate video. Moving on here, we do have the five star fire type supporter in Rusalka. Now, of course, you'll want to prioritize Rusalka if you are running the fire type units. She is pretty strong in her lonesome. I would definitely prioritize her with the fire type allies. Her tap skill here may come in handy if you do run her alone to speed up your attackers. But other than that, you'll want to use her with your fire type row alongside Maupin, Myra, etc. Now, like I mentioned before, the fire type team may not be too reliable as Luffy will be banned. So I would definitely try to stay away from the fire type row and stick towards the water, wood, and light if you can. But if you do need to fill some slots, then the fire type units are totally fine just to get you through the event. Moving on here, we do have the five star dark type supporter in Lupin. Now, Phantom Thief Lupin may come in handy here, as of course, the attackers will be very strong in this end guard season. So I would definitely make sure to try her out if you would like alongside your attackers. Now, she may be a wasted slot if she doesn't manage to get off her slide skill, but since debuffers are banned, she may be a pretty good slot for the team to increase the damage of your attackers. So definitely an amazing option here in Phantom Thief Lupin. Make sure to run her if you do happen to have her invested and she should do well alongside your attackers. And for the last few recommendations here I do have for you all everyone would be the healers here. Now of course you probably will want to stay away from healers and focus on running attackers, supporters, as well as the defenders of course. But if you do want to run a healer we do have units like 5 star Pomona here. Pomona is pretty good. Now of course she is primarily primarily debuff evasion so she won't be doing you too well but she does have a revive on the drive skill so you may want to use that but I would definitely try to stay away from the healers here they sort of feel like a wasted slot but if you guys do want to run a healer we do have units like Pomona as well as Mots here you do see on screen and of course full alf which may come in handy as light type Jakangbi will be released and as you can see in alf slide skill she does have in pvp grants invincible ignores all attacks and debuffs removed after 14 seconds or when attacked two times so actually i would expect to see full alf a ton if you are running into Jakangbi's, as she'll be resetting alf slide skill and kind of make your light type row untargetable so i would definitely focus on full alf if you do consider running Jakangbi as the slide skill reset will be very valuable here for full elf so i would make sure to prioritize her over the other two as well as of course the wood type healer in freya that's what we did mention earlier but anyways everyone that'll pretty much do it for my recommendations for the upcoming endless duel and guard event so make sure to prepare some of these units during the hot time this weekend as you'll want to be up and ready for our upcoming event so make sure to let me know which units you guys are focusing on for the upcoming end guard season and make sure to let me know what you guys do think of the banned child. But before you go, everyone, make sure to leave a like on this video as well as be sure to subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you haven't yet done so already, check out channel memberships down below if you're interested in further supporting the channel as well as the links to my Twitch channel and where we do live stream Destiny Child and of course to my Twitter account as well. But with all of that being said, I'll catch you all in the next Destiny Child video. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you.